What's shaking? Hey, I'm Rick Jordan. Today, we're going all in. All right, today I'm especially pumped because I, I was just on this dude's show just a little bit ago. I don't know if it's out yet, but it was so much fun having a conversation with him because we saw each other at VCon and just he saw me on stage and I was just having an awesome time there. And he's like, well, I got to connect with this dude. So we did. He's serial entrepreneur, performance coach, dynamic public speaker, tech visionary and thought leader, husband of 17 years and father of two, co-founder of that one, a top podcast agency in the world. And of course, now author of Rocket Fuel, C-Rock. Welcome to the What's show, up? man. What's up? What's up, Rick? <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. I always like to start shows with gratitude. Oh, I Thanks love for that me. for sure. You know, I, I've been putting that out to my team a lot lately too. You know, I, I'm starting the day for that because there's a lot of stress in the workplace always, right? There's a lot of things that are unknown, but it's like, what are we grateful for today? It's like, a, you know, we're, we're, we're fighting in an acquisition right now, you know, and fighting, I mean, like pushing up the timeline to close it. And at the same time, it's like, oh, there's all this stress, but it's like, dude, we have an acquisition. We have money to fund the acquisition. You know, it's, it's super, super gratitude every day for that. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I always think of that. Like, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, you know, I have a house I just woke up in. I have a bed I just woke up in. Like the little simple things, man. Yeah. It makes all the difference. And I know a lot of people have heard about that, but yet so many, so few people practice it. For sure. Absolutely. You know? No, we, we talked a little bit before because I, I was just on your show, right? I just mentioned that, and which is an amazing show, dude. Freaking love it. Thank you. Thanks. And it's What Are You Made Of? That's your show, which is top 1% in the world. It's awesome. And question you asked me, of course, was what are you made of? So I've got a question for you today. What does all in mean to you? Well, all in means to me that you're committed. It reminds me of the word committed. And when I talk about committed, I'm talking about because when I commit, I'm all in like everything in head, shoulders, knees and toes, butt cheeks, everything in. Because I understand that in life, if I want 100% participation for myself, that I got to do things when I don't feel like doing it, when it's hard. Those are the two things I focus on because I know I'm going to do it when it's easy. I know I'm going to do it uh, when I feel like it. So all in, man. Both, both butt cheeks. That, oh, that, that says a lot. I think that's enough. Dude, I think that's the best answer I've ever had. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. That's, that's amazing. That even gets in like I was imagining like a cold plunge <laughs> as you I started envisioning this, right? Your butt cheeks going in. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, you know, Rick, you know, Rick, when, when like I'm at the ocean or I'm the pool and I'm trying to go in, you got to jump in, right? Because otherwise yeah. you're tiptoeing in. And when you get up to your thighs, the upper thigh area, and above, it's like, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. You know? So, like, committing is like putting all that, all your junk in. So, just, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a little deep right away because as you were talking about this, uh, you know, because I'm sure we all have these examples. Can you, can you be a little vulnerable for a moment and tell everyone, you know, about a time that you did not go all in? Yeah. I mean, first thing, I'm just going to tell you, first thing that came to my mind is uh, when I went to college to play football, um, I went, well, I went all in to something. I didn't go all into football. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't drink until I got out of high school and I started, I went to senior week at the beach and first time I ever had, had a drink, it was a wine cooler of all things. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, a, I had one and I got a buzz and I was like, wow, this is cool. And I hadn't drank before. I, I was so focused on football when I finally got to college and football camp was coming up and all this, I saw girls and parties like real parties and real, I came from a small town. Okay. Yeah. Real selection of women. And I was like, this is like fantasy land. So I went all in on partying and half-assed football. And, you know, I look back on that nowadays and I'm like, man, if I would have just given it all now, I wasn't the size to play NFL, you know, it was division three. I wasn't getting a scholarship. Um, but yeah, I didn't go all in there and I, I don't think that was good enough to, um, you know, not just for playing time, but for the team and the, the, my teammates, I'm not really satisfied with that. Yeah. That's an interesting perspective, man, because it, as you start, it's cool. Cause I was watching your expression as you were saying all this, you know, and as soon as you started talking about your team, cause that's one thing that really kind of hit my heart 
because you, you weren't even just thinking like, hey, how did it affect me when I didn't put both buck cheeks in, put, put all your junk in? You were thinking about how that, that choice of yours affected everybody else around you. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like I want to, nowadays I want to do great things and I can't do great things with, you know, just myself. I need a team to do that. And I apologize. Alexa, I didn't even think about that going off and ring doorbell and all that. But <laughs> What's yeah, she doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like delivering something to my door. So yeah, thinking about to myself, like not being able to do great things by myself, you need people. And so who knows? I could have been just something that pushed us over the edge in a game or you just don't know. Yeah. To think about being the person responsible for that and that lack of leadership that I had at that moment. Now, I'm not beating myself up over it, Rick, and I'm not regretting necessarily or anything like that. It's yeah. just lessons to learn. Everything's a lesson to learn from. Yeah. Well, I, I, don't I don't get that vibe at all that you're beating yourself up over it. I love getting real and raw on these things, you know, because it, it, it helps. I mean, it, you're top 1%, right, in the world for podcasts. I'm top 2.5%. And I say that with so much gratitude. And I also say that's like I'm going to catch up, right, because I, lo I love the healthy competition, too. And you take a look at those and we have those stories. Like I can look back on myself and be like, Hey, this is one I didn't do it. And literally it's like, this is how it affected the people around me. You know? So as I hear you talking about this and see your expressions on your face, man, it's, we have big hearts. I think that's one of the reasons why we vibe together so well, you know, and how we connected. It's like our, our goal is not just to lift ourselves up. Our goal is to, it's like the rising tide lifts all boats, right? We love to be the tide, baby. We absolutely love to be the tide, but we, we like looking around and seeing all those boats rising up with us at the same time. Yeah, I mean, shit, by yourself, being, being successful by yourself sucks. It's lonely, Yeah, you know? And so for me, I've always been a people builder because I've been around so much brokenness in my life, witnessing anxiety, depression, you know, uh, mental health issues, uh, overprescription of medication. Yep overdoses, suicide, conflict, like just, I've been around all that yeah. and I just didn't like it. And I'm the kind of person, for some reason, I was just built this way that if I don't like something, I figure out a way to change it or help it or do something about it. Yeah, not right just on. sit and complain about it. So from a young age, I've dealt with that and I just became a person that's like, I'm just going to be a beacon of light, a people builder, an elevator, you know? So, yeah. yeah, I love that. It, it, can, could you identify... When you didn't go out, maybe it's that story or a different story, but what was the, what was the thing that you feel, you know, inside of you that, that caused you to not go all in, in any of those moments? Has it been the same thing over and over again in your life? Like a pattern you've realized that you've had to work on? Well, I think people go all in on something. It's like, if you don't go all in on this thing, you think you should be going all in on, you're going in all in on something. You're going all in on not doing that and focusing on something else. So for me, it's like, what is your mission? What's your purpose? And if you're going all in on that, you're, you're good. When you slip off of that, you're going all in on someone else's purpose and mission. Hmm. So I believe in setting intention in life. I got a formula that I talk about a lot about writing your story down and what you want. And when you write your intention down in the morning, I like to write a story about my life. And that sets my intention. When I set my intention, that leads to what I pay attention to. If I don't set my intention, somebody else will set my intention for me. It's, there's no middle ground. You either set your intention, you live out that attention, and that's what you focus on with your attention. Or somebody else's attention comes in, pushes you, grabs your attention. And here's the important part, Rick. What you pay attention to is what you validate as existence in your universe. Mm. Your universe, there's a main universe, and then there's a universe that we all perceive. Each of us have these glasses on, let's say, and our perceptions are all shaping a universe. Well, you have the choice of creating your universe or letting someone else create your universe. And it all stems from setting your intention or going off of someone else's intention. So to me, not being all in is, you know, it's it, you're not all in on a specific thing, but you're definitely all in on one or the other. Wow. That's powerful, man. I told you we were going to get deep and vulnerable quick, right? <laughs> kind of how we roll around here. Dude, you've done so much. I mean, looking at everything, I mean, I'm looking down at it right now. It's, uh, I mean, clearly it's like the first thing that I read off your bio was serial entrepreneur, you know, and you've, you've gone from whatever industry you were in, which I want to talk about that because that was tech, right? Which is what I'm in. And then into real estate after that. No, actually real estate first. Oh, really? Yeah, real okay. estate and mortgages for 17 years. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. 
Oh, you left your industry in real estate. I misread that. That's interesting. In your 40s, yeah. So why'd you shift from that, dude? Because, I mean, that's like what everybody wants to get into. And now you're like, I'm jumping ship. I'm out of here. Well, I started as a real estate agent 18 years ago and then uh, got into mortgages very shortly after that because I realized uh, I was a, I was a list, listing and buyer's agent, right? Yeah. And I hated showing people houses. I couldn't stand driving them around. I was, I was top sales and listing agent very quickly. Uh, because I just go, get, I just go after it. When I want something, I just go after it. But I didn't like showing houses, and I saw some buddies of mine that were in a mortgage space, similar, but they were doing the lending. And I'm like, they got the keys to the castle over there, and two, they're making good money. Yeah. And they don't have to drive people around the houses. So I said, let me go try that out. So I, I talked to a buddy of mine, who was my best friend, who I was referring my business to. I said, hey, I want to try out the mortgage thing. He's like, no, you're my top. Top referral partner. I said, listen, I promise you I will make it worth your while. Immediate self-preservation there, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, well, I've told him, I, said, I, I promise you I'll make it worth your while. Yeah. So when we ended up going over there, I did very well. He ended up making money because he was a manager at that time. And then we ended up partnering. And I ended up being in that business, uh, the mortgage space for 17 years, started as a loan officer, and then built up branches, had 50 some employees, seven branches, doing 11 to 13 million, depending on the year, a year in revenue make good money. I just was not fulfilled. It was like, I, there, there's something more here. I have power. I know, Rick, I just have this thing. I don't know where it comes from, but I know that I have this, this being that being that's just so massive. Yeah. And I, I can't live with myself, not using it and playing the game that it's designed to, to play. Mortgages just wasn't it, man. And I felt trapped at times. I felt like, uh, you know, cause I was making good money and you feel like, man, I can't just leave here. Where am I going to make this kind of money? Like you feel like there's nothing else that you can make this kind of money in. And that just comes from ignorance and lack of knowledge of something. So I started traveling. And I started seeing other people make money at different things. And I, I just started realizing, wait a minute, there is more out here, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take a step back, take a step forward. I believe we talked about this. Yeah, I sure uh, did. It might've been us where we talked about, hey, yeah. your net worth sometimes has to dip to make it go, because because you don't want good in your life. You want great. Yeah. So I, I can stay good, but... I'm not good enough with that, man. It's yeah, not good man. enough for me. Yep. So I love to call that why, like the reinvesting season, right? When that happened, we did talk about this exactly, that reinvesting season to where you're taking everything that you have. It's like you're all in shifts. Yeah. Yep. Because <laughs> yep. you, you, you got butt cheeks in this pool over here, but you're like, yeah. I like the way that pool looks like over yeah. there. I'm going to go put my junk all in in that pool. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's right. Yeah. But so that's it. Took a, it took a lot because listen, well, and, and also the mortgage business is up and down and it's very commoditized. Yeah. Uh, who's got the lowest rates. You have always people rate shopping and it's like, you know, I can't drop my rate or I'll, I won't make money. Like this is a business folks. And there's always somebody lying and it's just, a, it's just a, a weird business. And I just, I, I just don't want to be a part of that stuff. So getting out of it, there's no perfect time to exit something and move into something else. So eventually I realized that I was holding on to this, this banana. And sometimes that banana holding on to that banana keeps you from excelling in other areas. So I let go of the banana one, April 30th this year, and started focusing mainly on that one agency, which is the podcast agency that you talked about, and PR and branding, but also staying in the real estate knowledge I have here, going into a mergers and acquisitions company. I opened up Waymore Group, and we do mergers and acquisitions, and that includes real estate. And I got a project we're working on right now that's a $10 million deal that we're working on with that. So I didn't exit all real estate together. I just, this, the mortgage part of it is just not for me anymore. Yeah. I love that. Can we talk a little bit more about that? Cause I mean, you're talking about letting go of the banana, you know, that you said something that is very resonating, which is there's never the perfect time to exit. Yeah. Uh, what was some of the turmoil? Cause I'm sure you were bouncing back and forth at one point in time, like weighing the pros and the cons and all that. And how did you finally just decide to be like, I'm just going to let go. Well, by the way, there is perfect times to exit uh, if somebody's paying you a big absorbent. <laughs> True. I mean, this wasn't that, that wire case, transfer. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah right this on. wasn't that case. This is me shutting everything down. I had a lot of people that were relying on me. I felt like I didn't want to let them down. But when they all started to see what happened in the mortgage industry is the rates started shooting up from two and a half, three percent to right now, sevens. Okay. More than double. And then the inventory in real estate started dipping. So it made it very difficult in the mortgage business in general. And I was just like, this is definitely a sign. Like, this is it. And all the people that were working with me were like, hey, we need to try something else. And I'm like, go do it. I want to support you. I'll do whatever we got to do. 
And that gave me freedom. Like, Hey, I'm not letting these folks down by leaving. Yeah. And so for me, I think that's what I was, was holding me back in a way. And then now Rick, I talked to you about this and I'm a transparent dude. Like anyway, like I don't, I'm, I'm not one guy to pretend I'm something that I'm not. I'd rather, I'd rather share with people something and uh, you know, it's less than what they thought of me. Honestly, uh, you know, I have to sell assets to live off of right now, you know, like, cause the income for the agency is not where it was with the mortgage business. Yeah. So you got lifestyle that you build up to. Okay. I'm making X amount of money. I have a lifestyle here. I'm investing. And then that stops. And then your lifestyle can't, you can't pull your lifestyle down as fast as the income can drop. Yeah. You just can't. So then I have to redirect my focus. Okay. Sell assets. The ones that you, you know, you prioritize which assets you should sell based on tax implications, all that. Take that money and then go and use it for your bills and lifestyle and then work <laughs> on pulling your lifestyle back just for a short time. And then take that money and understand what kind of runway you have, invest in the business and build as fast as possible, focus on revenue in the new company. All focus on revenue building. You know, because if I sp- spend my focus on, uh, uh, if I go all in on just saving expenses, you can only save so many exp- expenses. Dude, so amen. my time needs to be focused on the infinite potential of revenue generating. Yeah. And so that's what I've been focused on recently. It's uh, sometimes I wake up in the morning saying, what the heck did I do? Questioning myself, the self-doubt creeps in and I'm hard, excuse me, really hard on myself. But I I don't always celebrate how far we've come with the agency in a year and a half. Like it's amazing what me and two other people in our company, there's three of us, have done in a year and a half. It's just amazing from scratch. That's awesome. You know? It's cool when you focus on that too, because it's it's great. I, I've always said this: it's like all problems in business can be solved by more revenue, like that that one thing alone. You know, because the way you're you phrasing that one, it, did you, know, you say that one, that one that thing one. alone, that one, that one thing. <laughs> well, my company's called that one, and you said that really? one thing. <laughs> oh, dude, that's awesome! I, I didn't even up catch every time that. Yeah, says that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm like, what did I just say? And then, <laughs> I know you don't even know you said it. I know exactly. <laughs> I love it. Yours. I love it. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, yeah, every problem in business in business can be solved with more revenue. It's it's that simple. And, but if you go into the mindset of this too, and that's what I'm picking up as you're talking, is you know, there's not a because fo- expenses if you focus heavily on expenses, you know, and there's entrepreneurs, I mean, like ton, right? And I'll I'll say names, it's like, it's the same as you, like I'll throw things out there because I I heard a talk by Dan Locke, right? Who is now like, he was huge at one point in in our space and now he's way, way, way down there, right? His popularity has dropped off, not a lot of business going on. But I remember hearing a talk from him, uh, it was right when the pandemic started. You know, and his focus was so much on like, we need to cut back, we need to pull back. And, and he was just, he was speaking to the same group that I was speaking. He was on like right before me, right? He was on stage right before me. And as he's talking about, I'm like, oh my God, I feel so depressed right now. You know, because he's just 100% focusing on lack. His mindset is complete scarcity. You know, just focusing on what he does not have right now and how he's gonna he's like oh you have to pull all this back now's the time to conserve cash and everything i was like screw that you know i got up i'm like i'm gonna disagree with that dude right there because i'm doubling down on everything i'm going public in two years you know this is what my intention is i am reinvesting everything that reinvestment season right putting all of my cash that's coming in and dumping it right back into the business i am not focusing on my expenses i am simply focusing on growing my top line in the most exponential way that's possible because i believe in exponential growth not incremental growth you know and the room erupts dude you know, and, and it's exactly what you're saying, you know, and it's, I'm going to shut up here. We did, we did the same thing, didn't we? It's like, you went on a rant on your show. No, it doesn't you know? matter. <laughs> I love it. No, whatever. You, you're no, firing I'm, me up, dude. Yeah, but, but that's, I, that's I, it. I, I, All of your issues can be solved in business by just generating more revenue. When you have cash problems, create more cash. Don't try to hoard on to what little you think you have. Well, the other thing is when you go, there is a period of time where you've got to be disciplined and, and, and tighten up. Okay. And, and, you just don't spend all of your time on that. Yeah, you focus frugality. Day, yep. You, you got a day and you just clean house. What can we get rid of? Boom, boom, boom. Just get rid of it as fast as you can. Then invest all the rest of your time on g- generating revenue. The thing about it is when I talked about that lifestyle thing, when I'm trying to pull down on that lifestyle, yeah. it doesn't happen fast. 
but we can survive on a lot less than we think. Because when we get used to this lifestyle, we get fat, comfortable, complacent, not really literally fat, but like, and, and you think you need all this stuff. And then you like start cutting out television. You start cutting out different things, not just money that's going out the door, but time and attention mm. and behaviors that you're using that aren't going towards the mission. You should take time to do that. And in your mind, a lot of times you think to yourself, this is permanent. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to be living like this. This It's not permanent. Nothing's permanent, except unless you get plucked from this planet. It's a time of like sacrifice to get back to where you want to be. And again, I've referred to pulling back to be exploding. And uh, it's scary as shit sometimes, man. Honestly, it's scary sometimes. Um, I get in my head sometimes. I'm a guy that, I, I don't know about you, but I... I I let my mood get affected. I'm just being honest, like like acknowledging this. I get my mood get affected by uh, uh, revenue, weekly revenue, daily revenue, sales. When we're not selling it, we go through a little streak or something. I'm like, it's been real. It's been a good time. You know, I don't want to be like that. (laughs) It's just just like this thing I fight. Then when we get sales, I'm like, I'm the hottest person on the planet. Like happy. I don't know why I let that do that, but that's always been me, man. I love that. It gets you refocused pretty quick, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You guess? <laughs> I, I just, I, love, I know what I want in life. And when yeah. I get what I want, I get happy when I'm not, not getting what I want. But, you know, the other thing is, like, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to, um, when we were talking about a minute ago, like, how far you've come, like, in yeah. your business, how far you've come. Yep. And I don't want to get stuck in realizing how far we come and being so excited because I feel like it'll set complacency in. For sure. And I want to have that little edge, that little edge every so often, you know? Oh, yeah, man. I'm with you on that. I take those low points because it's, uh, I enjoy the low points. I mean, not for too long, right? Because <laughs> yeah. 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 we don't yeah. want to be there. But you take a look nah. at that. It's like, cool. So I, the only way to go from today is somewhere better than today. Well, you, you shared a story on my show about being a week from payroll or something or a day from payroll. Yeah, or something. It was two and days, I remember bro. that feeling that you gave me. Oh, was, man. Explain that to me. I have that feeling often, not because it's actually happening right now, but I, I get this thing in my head. Like, what if that happens? Oh shit. What if, like, we're like, what if we don't get a sale in a month? Yeah. What if we don't get a sale in the two months? That never happens. But you like, what if we don't, or what if I didn't get that five sales last week or what, what man, where would I've been? And you start getting these, if you let your mind go too much, like it can really mess with you. So that, uh, that story creeped me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You've been restless at night now since then. <laughs> nah, I mean, I just think about it. I'm like, oh, I remember that feeling. And, you know, but again, at the end of the day, Rick, one yeah. thing we got to think about if the worst case thing happened, the, the thing we'd have to do is we'd have to figure something out, which yeah. we always do. You have to share with the employees, the employees, you think they're not going to be good. Hey, they're going to go find another job somewhere. They're going to be fine. They are. Yeah. And exactly. worse, I always tell myself this worst case scenario, I got to be like Tom Cruise in Cocktail, the movie Cocktail, for those of you older people that have seen that movie. And I'll have to go into the Caribbean and bartend. That's the worst case scenario besides yeah. dying. So, like, I got to, you know, and so I'm just kind of explaining to you all that are listening that when you get these, like, these thoughts in your head about, uh, worst case scenarios and what if this happens in business? What if this happens? Just remember, what's the worst case scenario, really? Yeah. And who gives a crap what anybody else thinks? Yep. I you feel know? you. Anyway, I, don't know, I was going off on a tangent. That was my turn. Incredible, man. I like it. I love the I love the mutual <laughs> rants, the exchange of rants. <laughs> oh, bro. You have a book, Rocket Fuel. I want to make sure we touch on that because that's a, it was released, what, two years ago, something like that? Yeah, I think so. And uh, yeah, I think that's what it was. I, it's been, it seems like so long ago, man. It really does. I think it was uh, 2020. Wow. 2021. 2021. 2021. Yeah. It was like two years ago. My team did some good yeah. research. And I said, take a look. I mean, you had Grant Cardone write the forward yeah. on that, right? Which is awesome. And then his book, yeah. 10X, was just absolutely incredible. I mean, it's like massive action creates massive results. And that was phenomenal. So, what's the whole theme of rocket fuel? You know, sum it up for me in just a little bit. By the way, the 10X rule, I'll tell you something real quick. Yeah. That. My brother told me to read the 10X rule uh, back in 2018. He said, this guy sounds like you, you should read it. I'm like, All right, I'll read it. So I read it. And the thing that got me wasn't the 10X rule. It yeah. wasn't think big. I already had that. I already was t- doing massive things, right? Action, action, yep. action. My problem was the people around me could not see my vision. And every time I would talk yeah, about right. my vision or think big or be crazy, I felt like caged in because everybody didn't understand like what I was talking about. Yeah. And I thought I was crazy. 
And in that book, it validated this thing. Like, you're not the crazy one. You're not crazy if you think big. People in general have given up on themselves. They've given up on their mission. They've given up on their dreams. And so they're confused. They think that they don't have anything left to be really go big. They settle. You're not the crazy one. And that validated something for me. And that's when I, that's when I like just went off. Now, my book, I wrote my book because I noticed something in my life that everything that came my way that would seem to stop me or slow me down or be a bad thing, quote unquote, a bad thing. Really, I realized that it wasn't. Hmm. I realized that everything that came my way uh, was actually a training session or training material information, data or fuel. I would take the stuff and I would store it in my fuel tank versus my trunk. Most people keep all the, that stuff in the trunk. It weighs them down and slows them down. And I kept it in my fuel tank my whole life, not knowing what I was doing. I just realized that I was using things for fuel to become unstoppable. So every time in my life I would be going good, something would happen. I'd say, oh man, this, this is bad. I don't like it. But I would put it in my fuel tank and I would convert and it would push me further and faster. So I had to write a book about this because I feel like, man, this is something I realized. And once I realized it, it was even more powerful. And I also realized something else, Rick, that when you start to go through personal development and you run into bad things again, that, 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 that doesn't work as good because you start feeling like you need more higher octane fuel. That toxic fuel doesn't work as much. So I started realizing as I got more developed, my engines more developed, I needed a higher octane fuel. Mm. The higher octane fuel came from future. Like, what do I want in life? What are these big goals and dreams? I want to take my company public, whatever it is. That became my higher octane fuel and that pulled me further faster than the toxic stuff. But you got to use the toxic stuff until you develop yourself, find out really who you are, what you're made of, and then go from there. So I wrote a book about all this. I wrote it. It's all about my mentorship journey with Grant and then many others. And also some stories from when I was a kid, which you guys can read the book to, to learn about that. So <laughs> that's awesome, man. We're go we're going through uh with my sales team, you know, we're gonna go through everybody that's involved really in like client engagement, which I, I say it, it reach out, it's like, listen, everybody works for sales. I don't care if you're in accounting or whatever, or if you're, you know, solving a computer virus issue or something like that. Everybody works for sales because it's our responsibility to identify opportunities that are going to generally help our customers. You know, which means everybody's in that. But we go through books and we're going through the way of the wolf right now, you know, because new acquisitions, it's like we, we've got to like reset, which is cool. But I want to use your book for that too, man, because it's uh, just to go through that. That'd be a blast. You know, would you mind coming on board one one week as a, as a surprise guest into that, yeah, into that sure. meeting? That'd be I awesome, dude. I wouldn't mind at all. I, mind at all. <laughs> I love, love it. it. That'd be cool. Dude, I appreciate I'll like, I'll you. I'll like their asses up, man. Yeah, I love it, be ready. They better put their helmets and seatbelts on. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I appreciate you spending time with me today. You know, oh, thank just, you. Man. Just in incredible. I mean, amazing, amazing energy you've got that you bring to the world, dude. And I, I love where your values sit. I love that you look up for your source. Uh, and it's just incredible. I, I'm expecting good things for you, brother. I'm grateful for you. Thanks for coming thank on. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate you having me. It's been a pleasure. Great job. All right, share this out, please, with a bunch of people. Let's let's blow up C Rock's podcast to be top 0.1% in the world. All right, let's do that. Thanks, brother. Thank you.